it. But let's jump in, if you don't mind, and talk a little bit more about puberty, puberty in girls in particular, um, and uh, and we'll really get a good appreciation for that. As a dad of a three-year-old girl, it's a long way off for me, but I know it's on the horizon. Uh, you so think, it's, you think it's a long way off, but you're right. really um, in a very enviable position because you're going to give you some little nuggets here today. Um, and I do envy parents who are just at the beginning of it because they really have the ability to do it right. Right. Um, in my generation, it was, you know, suck it up, get over it. Puberty. Um, I had a lot of puberty trauma around my development, mental age. And I remember thinking I'm never going to do this to my girls. If I'm ever a girl mom, I'm going to do it completely different. And obviously I did very different. Um, but um, so here's the, the reality is that puberty is happening younger and younger in girls. Right. So we're no longer entering puberty at 14, you know, 15, 16. Girls are entering puberty at, at 11. It's 11 to 13. And the average age is actually 13, uh, 11. And what's also happening is breast development used to happen with puberty. Breast development is actually now happening almost two years earlier. OK, so there's a whole psychological developmental component with our girls. Right. They're, they're experiencing things that they're really not ready for mentally, physically, mentally, and it can be really, really challenging. And it's also challenging for parents because, you know, especially mom saying, well, I don't remember going through that, right? And what I love to, to, to teach parents is puberty is not about the reproductive system entirely, right? Puberty happens in the hypothalamus and then the pituitary gland and the adrenal glands. And I like to think of it as a cascade, right? It's a very gentle cascade that's happening within their bodies. And I love to teach parents to treat puberty like a superpower because it is. And I think when girls are really taught that this is not something to suck up and get over, that what's happening in their bodies is truly remarkable, I think it's a game changer. Right. I think we develop uh, the conversation around um, the empathy. Right. And remembering really, truly what their bodies are trying to do and that it's happening so much earlier than we realize. Right. So that this cascade and there's there's definitely we talk about signs. I talk about signs of puberty. You know, you mark the door when they're growing. Right. With pencil or pen. Right. Everybody does that. Yep, I hope yep, three of them. But, well, when you see those growth spurts right? That's the time. It's not Jack and the Beanstalk. You're growing for a reason. And kids, oh, I'm growing, right? And when they're, when they're little, they're just little balls, they bounce all over, right? There's just not much. But when they start hitting seven, eight, right? They start is really understanding the changes that are happening in their bodies. So when you see those growth spurts on the, on the door, then's the time, now's the time to start talking hormones, Right. And as a woman, hormones are going to be a part of your life forever and ever and ever. You can't make them the bad guys. And what happens a lot is we don't start talking about hormones until it's in relation to re reproduction. And that can be truly scary because hormones are your friend. Right. They it's your blood. It's your bones. It's your brain. Like all of the functions of your body are developed because of hormones. So hormones are your friends. And it's, I find it funny that, you know, we, we have this conversation with girls, not so much boys, right? Cause it's right. There's this, that disconnect, but when a, a girl can be friends with this transformation in her body of hormones and use it in a positive, think of it in a, in a positive way, it really just sets her up. 